Hello everyone and welcome to another RC related uh, review. Today we are going to take a look at uh, FPV camera. It's a all-in-one uh, mini camera, but uh, uh, this is a very powerful version. It has uh, 200 milliwatts instead of uh, the general stuff that you get at only 25 milliwatts. So this uh, has a very long range and uh, it's also very small as you will see so not uh, much information on the box only that it's a 3-in-1 and it has antenna, camera, transmitter so that's what they call 3-in-1 and it gets packed into uh, this foam and there's something else in the box so there's an adapter cable and we even get a small manual, a product instruction manual it's in English and you can see here the specifications you can uh, pause the video if you want to and here are the list with the channels it has uh, 40 channels it has uh, 600 uh, TV lines uh, camera so the resolution is uh, pretty good this is the 200 milliwatts version and it comes with the uh, antenna pre-soldered but it shows that uh, there are optional antennas that you can solder on this comes with a clover leaf already soldered and there's the pad so this is the camera this is how it looks very compact as you can see and let's take a look at those sizes so it's only 19.5 5 millimeters wide and only 30.42 wide and let's say thickness including the rear LED display and lens with the cap it's only 20 millimeters very compact and together with the antenna it has an approximate dimension of around 38 37 38 millimeters so you can see it's very compact and it comes with a small led display on the back to help you select the frequency which is also nice and uh, on the front circuit board you can see uh, this is covered in uh, some kind of uh, protective uh, gel uh, this increases the strength of the circuit board in case of a crash let me put some more light into it there it goes you should see that better now and here it has a small, small switch from which you can uh, change the channel and the frequency it works by quick press or long press to change the channels and then the frequencies the antenna is also nice it's kind of a chromed antenna or something like that it has a very smooth finish and uh, it's uh, pretty thick and uh, seems to be durable it's not uh, that type of antenna that bends very easy and I'm comparing this camera for example with this model uh, you can see this has a very thin antenna which is very bendy uh, it will uh, when you crash it it will bend almost instantly you can see it has kind of dense in it already and I haven't used this a lot and it's also larger than uh, uh, this one you can see from uh, its front there's a big difference in size even with the antenna and also in weight of course this uses a metal case uh, but uh, you can take it out of that this one doesn't come with a metal case it's all about weight so let's weight it And including the connector and antenna, I'm gonna take the lens cap off. It only has 4 grams, which is very good. This one has, without the lens cover, 7 grams. So, this uh, type of cameras are ideal for uh, tiny quads, making a tiny whoop or projects like that, uh, which I'm going to do. But my plan is to use it for something else because it has uh, more power. 
I plan to use it on a RC car and drive it FPV and uh, it's very nice that this camera also comes with an adapter cable and uh, you can just plug this in and you obtain a more uh, useful connector this one which is rather popular and now you can just plug it into a battery and you have obtained a working FPV system with ease on uh, this model you just get this cable this one will plug into the camera like that and it's up to you to solder the wires no connector included so they thought about this and uh, it's very good that they have uh, included the cable I'm now going to power on the camera and I'm going to zoom in and when you start the camera you can see that it's showing A1 and uh, two lights two bars that means that it's uh, working two bars meaning that it's on and uh, the channel and frequency if you hold uh, this uh, small switch here pressed about five seconds like this and it flashes two bars if I press it again zero means that it has uh, turned off actually the video transmitter so now the camera is in uh, standby it will not emit FPV signal anymore uh, this is useful when you have this uh, camera installed on a, a quadcopter or plane or something like that and it's powered from the flight battery uh, maybe you want to do some calibrations or tests or configure the flight controller you don't want the FPV camera to run to overheat and to consume extra power so you can just turn it off do your job then later when you want to fly you just turn it back on so now I'm going to turn it back on so I'm going to keep pressing about five seconds and now I'm pressing again short press two bars meaning that I have turned on the transmitter and now it will go back in flashing power on channel and frequency if I short press the switch button here it will change the frequency of uh, the corresponding channel as you can see 8 and then it will loop back to 1 also if I press it 2 seconds it will allow me to change the channels A, B and so on so I'm going to let it on A for now I'm going to power on the video receiver monitor this monitor only has 8 channels so let's try on A band the first 8 channels maybe I can get lucky and get the frequency easy and we have image working fine very sharp image but you can't assess that from seeing this video and uh, you will see this later on a DVR recording because that's how you can properly assess its transmitting uh, properties uh, no artifacts, no lines, no nothing uh, it's normal because it's very close to the monitor we have to see how it's coping in uh, other conditions like range conditions and uh, being perturbed by something else like TSEs and transmitting frequencies on uh, the 2.4 band but for now it's doing just fine and uh, it's a bit hot it feels warm to the hand so those uh, 200 milliwatts are there it really has some big power but uh, that should hopefully provide us with a very good range my plan for uh, this styling camera is to actually install it on a RC car and uh, dr drive it FPV uh, the car has a pretty good range and I'm thinking of installing the camera something like that here uh, it will give you a very nice uh, uh, view from this angle it will be like just uh, driving a rear car and uh, it should provide some uh, nice footage and interesting uh, an interesting uh, control over the car I'm anxious to try that and uh, I think I'm going to power it from uh, this small LiPo 
because the car uses a lot of uh, current from uh, the battery. The camera forgot to mention that uh, uses uh, uh, only one cell battery to power on and I don't believe it will support 2S, let's see. So yes, input power from 3.2 volts to 5 volts, so you cannot power it with a 2S battery, only 1S or a video or a, sorry, or a voltage regulator, this car uses 2S, so it's not possible for me to power it on, as it doesn't have a, a voltage regulator on board, it uses a 3-in-1 uh, converter, it's a ESC, it provides power to the servo, it's a closed system, you cannot take 5 volts out from it, so I'm going to use a small LiPo to power it, and that will provide also a very long time for the camera, because it uses a uh, very low current and even if the car runs out of battery you will still get FPV video from it. So this was the first part of uh, my review for the AKK 3-in-1 camera. Uh, if you want more information about it, uh, specifications and uh, where to buy it from, I'm going to include uh, links uh, where to get it in the video description, check them out. They have a lot of uh, nice products related to FPV and RC hobby. So you should definitely check them out. Uh, be sure to follow me as soon I'm going to do the second part of it and uh, include the FPV footage from it. So you can see how it copes with light changes and uh, being installed actually on uh, something and seeing a real footage from it. Until next time, bye bye.